I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing my working yarn yoink and just pulling it through. And now I don't need that other loop anymore. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my stitches. Do you see this? It's utter chaos. I've lost it all. So whatever, I'm just gonna start over again. Today I'm casting on a sock. In order to start this sock, I have to take out the perfectly fine beginnings of another sock. There aren't any mistakes yet. I could just keep going with it, do a row here, a row there, trudge through making this perfectly fine sock. Except problems are going to pop up with this sock, inevitably. And when that happens, I know I'm just going to avoid the whole thing. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can tell. It is raining again for the millionth time this year already in San Diego. I think we've already hit kind of our average yearly rainfall, and it's January 16th or 17th. So, yeah, go San Diego. Go rain. Go sunny rain. Okay, anyway, back to knitting. When it comes to doing the magic cast on, um, it's a little bit of finger work and that's kind of the fun part. Uh, knitting is a lot of manual dexterity, <clears throat> but once you know a little bit of the manual dexterity, it's really easy to move it around and um, figure out stitches. People think that knitting is so hard and it's really just moving loops around. Yes, some things get a little more tricky, but once you have the little bit of that dexterity with your fingers and you know what you're doing, um, it's really fun to create something out of nothing. So with that being said, I'm going to take my two double pointed needles, which I have two more, and I'm going to take my yarn and this is my tail end. I'm going to keep it nice and long. It's probably going to be either too long or too short, and that's usually how I roll. So I have needle one, needle two. This is the front, this is the back. So I'm going to drape, I'm gonna put that yarn over the back needle so my tail is right here in the front. And then I'm going to twist it. Do it. I'll do a little twist. And that makes a first stitch. So then, the issue is I simply have no love for this sock. I really don't love the texture and I'm not crazy about the color either. If I keep this sock on my needles, it will live a miserable half-life living on my bookshelf or worse, living in a plastic storage bin in the garage. Any knitter with at least six months of knitting under their belt will have a whip pile. This is the works in progress pile. It's where all well-intentioned projects go to rest while some fun new pattern with extra squishy yarn gets called up. Sometimes it's a real place. A cozy wicker basket placed carefully next to your fireplace and rocking chair. Usually the pile is a metaphor for I have a bunch of half finished projects stashed around the house. Special projects can make it out of the pile alive. More times than not, however, it becomes a burial ground for all the mistakes, poor decisions, and uninspired projects of your past. It can be hard for a knitter to give up a project already in progress. I mean, this was my time. This was my valuable, precious time. Undoing any of my knitting progress feels like dumping all of my time into the trash. But I can't make myself like this sock. Uh, maybe it'll click later, but right now it's not. If I actually
actually respect my time. I will make something I actually will use with my time. So I'm gonna come from behind for the first stitch. See how I just came from behind and looped it over. And then I'm going to split the middle, come around, come over the bottom here, come over the top and front, come over the bottom and from the back to the front. So now I'm gonna try to tighten up a little bit because I don't want my stitches to be fat. This already probably too loose. But as you can see, I already have uh, six stitches. I'm about to have seven, but or like three sets. Um, so when I do a sock, I typically cast on 20 stitches. So I'm gonna do 10 sets. So I have one, two, three. So this is four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I already got a little distracted in my counting, so I'm gonna count again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, yeah, because this is the end of a set. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of counting and knitting. If you don't like to repetitively count to yourself over and over again, knitting is definitely not for you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Wait, nine. Ten. Okay. Okay. Something else that I need to do is purchase yarn for my February project. I'll be doing a, um, a bulky sweater and I've picked out the yarn and the color. I just need to purchase it. Actually, I just need to do the math and then I need to purchase it. So. So I need 5.3 skeins of 100 gram skein yarn skeins. Okay, I think my brain just shut down for half a second. Okay. I'm going to add in four of my primary color, and it is 100 gram. So well, this is 108 yards. Oh, so I have to change my math, right? If this says the weight yardage is 100 grams is 100, oh, that's yards and not meters. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick with my original plan because the idea of me trying to figure out meters to yards is just not gonna happen. I know, Bart doesn't like that idea either. <laughs> I am what you would call a continental knitter, a more traditional type of knitting. So if I were knitting this as one strand, I would go, I would go into my stitch and then I would wrap it around and then I would pull my stitch through the loop. That is not what I do because that takes forever and that's not how I was taught.
Okay, so um, this last stitch is just kind of hanging loose. So what I'm going to do is twist this so it has just a little bit of a grip. I know you can't see it super well, but plus the yarn is dark, but trust me, it's twisted. Now I have a little toe. So in order to move forward with any other socks, I have to let this guy go. I can't let him live a half life. Even if I do find something good for him in the future, it has to start over Credit card information ends up on the internet. So I guess we'll turn it this way. Okay, so I'm going into this whole vlogging thing. And <laughs> first, I don't even know who this person is that's doing it. I am such an introvert and such social anxiety that I don't even know where this is coming from, but I'm doing it anyway. So yeah, I'm putting myself out there regardless of anything I might be thinking about myself internally or whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I went to work last night and I, because of doing some car repairs, I had taken my badge out of its normal place. And so I didn't put it back in its normal place, which meant when I went to work, I didn't have my badge. So I had to get a temporary one from the security people. And you have to turn in your ID and they give you a temporary badge and then you pick it up in the morning. So then I go to pick it up in the morning. And of course it's a different security guard from the previous night. And I'm like, hey, can I have my card? Um, can I have my ID back? And he's like, okay. So mind you, um, I'm like thinking to myself, I look blonde in this picture. So he's, he's kind of looking at it. I think there's no, there's one ID and he's looking at it. Like he doesn't know if that's me. I'm like, Oh, come on. So I'm like, Oh, I might be blonde in that picture. And he looks at me and he looks at the ID and he goes, Whoa, 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 Whoa. And I'm just standing there after a 12 hour shift. Like, is that a good woe or a bad woe? What, what is the woe part? Um, cause I almost said, oh, I'm the pretty one when he was looking for IDs just as a joke. Cause clearly he only had one ID. Um, so yeah, I walked away like, I don't know how to take that. Um, but okay. I don't think I look that different in my picture. I didn't even have my glasses on. Um, I had a mask on, but so yeah, apparently this or old me, that was, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, whoa. So. <laughs> Thank you.